Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. During World War II, Irina Sendler risked her life day after day to save thousands of people in the Warsaw Ghetto from the Nazis. She was tortured and had both of her arms and legs broken. She died in the year 2008 at age 98. In 2007, the Nobel Prize Committee chose to give the Peace Prize to Al Gore for making a science fiction movie, rather than Irena Sandler, and she died the following year. Al Gore became very rich for scamming the world about climate, and in 2006 he said we only had 10 years left to save the planet. The United Nations said the same thing in the year 1989, that we only had 10 years left to save the planet from global warming. And more recently, climate experts Alexandria Cortez and Joe Biden have made similar warnings. The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? We don't have a lot of time. We don't have much more than 10 years for real. And at the 2007 Nobel Prize ceremony, Al Gore solemnly predicted that the Arctic would be ice free by the year 2014. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. In the last few months, it has been harder and harder to misinterpret the signs that our world is spinning out of kilter. He didn't do very well with that prediction. The extent of sea ice now is greater than it was 15 years ago when he made that forecast. This map from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows the area of sea ice on this date in 2007, which was more than one meter thick. Now I'm going to show you the same map for the current date. You can see that the area of one meter thick ice has greatly expanded from 15 years ago when the area was much smaller. Over the last 15 years, the Arctic has gained ice, not lost it. But there is something very interesting in the 2007 map. There was a lot of four meter thick ice in 2007 shown in red, but now there's very little. This is how the press and academics reported on it in 2009. The thick multi-year ice covering the Arctic Ocean has effectively vanished, a development that will make it easier to open up polar shipping routes, according to an Arctic expert. The implication being that during the summer, the ice is melting in the Arctic and all the thick ice is gone. Now let's take a look at what actually happened to that thick ice between 2007 and 2009. Watching this animation, you can see that during the winter of 2008-2009, winds blew the thick ice out of the Arctic basin down the east coast of Greenland where it melted in the North Atlantic Ocean. Arctic temperatures during that winter and summer were actually quite cold. The ice didn't melt in place, it was simply blown out by unusual winds. That wind pattern has changed, and now the thick ice is expanding. But rather than tell the truth about this, the press and the United Nations continue to scam the public with their imaginary Arctic meltdown. On this date last year, dozens of Russian ships got trapped in thick ice off the coast of Siberia. It took weeks working with Russia's largest icebreakers to get the ships freed from the ice. There's thick ice now near the Siberian coast, but in 2007 there wasn't any. In 2009, the press said that the disappearance of the thick ice was going to make it easier to open up polar shipping routes, but the exact opposite has occurred. They say the Arctic is overheating and the ice is melting, but for some reason when that warm Arctic air comes down to the United States, it gets very cold and causes the water to freeze. According to the New York Times, overheated Arctic air when it arrives in the United States causes extreme cold. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this junk science scam for almost the entire time which Al Gore has had his Nobel Prize. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, and Upla on the web at realclimatescience.com.